Hello and welcome to this new mini series that will be focused on making a Mega Man like game in Pixel Game Maker MV Engine. Now this won't be a complete one to one of the Mega Man actual game, but it will go into the mechanics that you would find in a typical Mega Man game. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so I will be creating this project from scratch. So we start in the create project tab and we're going to call this project new bot. So this is the new bot mini series. And I'll just copy and paste that and as the project name as well. I'm going to create a blank project. I'm going to hit next. This is going to be a side view. By the way, I'm in version 1.0.5.switch. We're going to use the tile size of 16 by 16, and we're going to use a custom 320 by 180, and it's going to be one player. I'm going to hit OK, and it should initialize. All right, so let's get right into it and start adding some resources going to add an image. We're going to use these tiles right here for now. We're going to import for today. We're going to go over creating a normal walking and then a shooting while walking player object. So we're going to add the weapon set one and then the weapon set one when it's attacking. I'm going to open these up and then we'll just go over them a little bit. First off, we need a partition. So one, two, three, four, five by three. So five by three partitions it up just right here. I want to go over why I position them in the middle of the cell like this. You can see that this cell is pretty big. So the reason I did this is you want this character to be in the center as close as possible. This is going to allow objects or runtime actions that use like a move toward feature. Some bullets have this as well as move template settings. This is going to be what they're moving towards is the center of this square this uh, sprite cell right here so it's pretty important that you have them positioned ahead of time so that you don't have to do a lot of refactoring for the wall detections and stuff all right so that is for the weapon one normal and we still have to partition the weapon one attack here so five by three now you'll notice that these sprites are very similar placed like for instance we have the idle standing and then we have the walking frames right here and then if you go to the attack version, you have the uh, barrel out. And then in the walking ones, we have the barrel out as well. Now we're just going to be focusing on idle, the jump, and then the walking. So you can see that this is the, the sprite sheet where the barrel is out. And this is the sprite sheet where the barrel is in. So this is how we're going to use our animation set change. The only other real thing we need is the bullet. So we'll just go find this bullet here. Just going to be a weapon one basic normal because we're going to do charge shot and then we're going to do other weapons as well all right so now we can add our player animations and we're going to register the resource now i'm only going to register the weapon one normal by scrolling here it'll be the one where the barrel is not out and i'm going to hit okay right now and i'm going to hit okay just to make this set now i can right click go back into the animations and now we can actually add another set because you notice that I didn't click on here and add the attack right here. You could normally, this is a fairly normal way of doing things, but we're not going to use this method to change to this animation. So we're going to get rid of it on here. We're actually going to play with the animation set tabs. And so I'm going to click add because this is animation set one that we're associating with this, with this sprite sheet. And so in animation set two, we can now do this drop down method and we can say what the second animation set is going to be. And so the second animation set is going to be the weapon one when it's attacking. So now we can have the barrel out when it's in animation set two, and we would have the barrel in when it's in animation set one. Now, this is why the positioning is also important because we need the walking sprites exactly where the walking barrel out sprites are and the same with the jump and the idle and you would do this for every animation you had say that you had multiple in here then you would have to come to this second uh, set tab here and you would have to select which set would be for each of those individually because they default to the original ones so if you left it blank if i set not set it would actually still show this one even if you change it to two, because it would, it just, it needs a default one. Okay. So now that we've added the attack one, I'm going to hit okay. And now we can start to change our animations here. 
right? So the first thing I need to do is determine where I want the origin to be. And in a side view game, you can get away with using the center origin. And that way, a lot of your bullets and stuff can spawn from the center. You don't have to do any adjustments. On a top view game, you definitely want to do floor. And you would want to get the feet as close to the, the uh, horizontal line as possible. But in a side view project, we have a little, little more leeway when it comes to the origin. The next thing that we need to do here is I'm going to actually get rid of the collision box, but we need to set up the wall detection. And so what I like to do is when I'm doing the wall detection here is I like to keep the, the middle of the wall detection exactly on this vertical red line. And I'll show you why here in a minute. So we're going to bring in the wall detection until that line is see maybe one more out like this and that should work and then i'll just bring it down a little bit to like that now the reason why is because if you if i had it over like this and i was to come and do another direction and flip it you see that it flips the image as well as the wall detection position now let's unflip it and let's place it in the middle where the middle of the wall detection is on this vertical line here and then let's flip it again, you'll see that the wall detection stayed the same. And the wall detection is probably the most important thing to keep the same size and the same position throughout all of your animations. Now, there are some exceptions, for instance, crouching. Uh, if, you, if say this wall detection was gonna be up here, I would have this size for every animation, but the crouching one, how I would handle that differently is I would just only bring the top down. I wouldn't change the sides, I wouldn't change the bottom, the only other thing that I've seen, unless you're actually changing to a bigger animation and you have to increase the wall size, um, swimming is another area where you might be a little wider then. But usually when you're doing swimming transitions, you're controlling the movement. And so your chances of clipping are a lot less. But the chance of clipping is the reason why we keep the wall detection as close to the same as possible, if not always the same. All right, so the last thing to show off real quick is the animation sets that we were changing. We can actually access them from this tab right here, this little drop down menu. And so if I was to select two, you can see that now I can see the idle with the cannon out. If I go back to one, I can see that one. This is really nice when you're doing connection points and you don't know exactly where you need to go. You can just select this one and place the connection point where you want it to be. All right, so now we can actually get into organizing our player here. So this one is just gonna be a simple idle. And this one is going to be the right of it. Wait, is this flipped? Yeah, it's flipped. So this is actually gonna be the left. So we're gonna mark it as the input for the left. And then we're going to just leave it as is. Once again, this is how it will look in the idle. Now I'm going to copy and paste the direction, call it six. I do this for the number pad direction. So four is left, six is right. And then I'm just going to flip it. Now we're going to create the walk. And actually, just to make this copy pasting easier, there's one more thing we need to set up, and that is the center, this little red pixel right here. This is going to be determining in this specific game when we can climb a ladder and when we can't. There'll be some other things that I'm sure will be useful for, but that's the main thing is just for ladder climbing. And so we want the red pixel position more right above the feet. We want it above the bottom floor of the wall detection, but we want it below just kind of the mid of the wall detection is a good spot for it. So to do this, we have to click on the frame and we have to actually adjust the center right here. And it's just easier to do it on this idle one because it's only one frame. Otherwise you'd have to do this. I mean, there's shortcuts, you can shift click all of them. But this works right here. So now the only thing I got to do, and I'll just make it an even number right here. So 34 by 24. And I'll copy this. We still got to go to the right one, which by the way, I forgot to click on the right and uncheck the left. And then we're going to paste the center right here. Now notice it is flipped. So the center went over here. So I'm going to say 24 by 34. And so there's our center. So now our center set up. So I'm going to actually delete the wall or the walk and recopy paste it. And now everything is set up with the template. 
it's a very easy way to go about adding animations. All right, so the walking is actually going to require some animations. So I'm going to delete the right, and we're just going to do the focus on the left. And this is going to be the first frame. And we're going to give it some time. We'll just say six to start. And we'll copy paste, we'll select the middle walking, then we'll select the last one. And then we have to add another one for the middle, so that it has a middle one to go to before it goes to the first frame again. And then we're going to click on walk and make it a looping animation. And then we're going to test it out and see what it looks like. And that looks about right. So we'll just start with that and see how that looks. For now. This is left click. So now I'm going to copy and paste. We're going to change this to right. We're going to click on the right and uncheck the left. And that should be it once we so I clicked on the top shift click on the bottom or however that worked. And then I'm going to click flip horizontal. And it kept my center kept my wall detection. Everything looks good. Now the last one that we need is the jump. And I'm going to click on the idle for this one because I don't want it looping. And we'll just say jump. We're going to come to this frame right here. And we're going to select the jump frame. And then we're just going to go to the right frame and select this one. All right. And so one thing to just always get in the habit of is checking your wall detection, making sure they're in the same position. And even between these motions right here, and they look really good. All right, so now we can go ahead and add the player object. So we'll go to the objects tab. We'll go and right click and we'll say add an object. Now the cool thing is, is if you don't name it, you can come down and select and when you click on the animation you want, it'll actually rename it to the animation. So sometimes you can get away with that. Now we want player group. The reason why is because we want it to be a controllable player group. And we're just going to leave these as default for now. And we'll click OK. And it adds. Now it adds a template where you have a waiting, a walk, and a jump. So in my case, I name it idle just because that's what I name the animation. And I make sure that it's idle. I'll go to walk. And I'll just click on the walk animation. And then I do have a jump. And I will click on the jump one. So now with this player controller template, you can have access to idle walking jumping. Matter of fact, let's go put this in the scene just so you can see. We're going to change this up. There's a basic controller template that I like to use personally. But it's nice to just see that you can have this. And since this series is showing showing off some of the engine some people might be watching that don't know about this so i'm just going to do some test tiles for right now and we'll bring in those tiles click ok and i'll just use whoops i'll just use these ones for right now so i'm going to highlight multiple of these ones and i'm going to give it a top wall detection we're going to go to our scene we're going to create a new scene i'm going to make it a two by one and we're going to add those test tiles and we're just going to call this a test scene for right now now, when I added a second width, you'll see that there's this red area, and then there's a, this black area, but another width of the scene. I want the player to be able to walk between all of this area. So I'm going to click all and now the player can. And then this blue one is for the camera. So I also want the camera to be able to go in all of the scene. And then I'll hit OK. Alright, so now we got some layers, we'll deal with those later. But for right now, we'll just stick on this top layer right here. And I'm going to place some of these tiles. And we're just going to simply place them. When I placed this full set, it gave me an edge on this on this one right here. So I didn't want to use the edge. So I just right clicked on one of the middle ones, and then you, it will auto select the middle and then you can just continue going like that. If you right click on a blank tile, you can grab a blank tile to replace it. Just some little tips real quick. And actually, I, I want no edge on this side too. All right, so now we'll go to the object here. And this was the whole point of this was to test the template. And over here, you can actually set the default display direction. And I want it to just be facing right in this case. And we'll go something like that. And we'll play test. And right away, we got some stuff to change here. Can't really see. So we can go to the project settings. And we can enlarge the display 
since we're using a 320 by 180, it's a very, very low resolution. We can actually scale it. So we're gonna scale it by four, and that's gonna bring us up to 1280 by 720, which is actually needed for switch exports, by the way. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now if we play test, it'll be much bigger, much easier to see. And you can see that you have a basic running and you have a basic jump, stuff like this. Now, the reason why this doesn't work, this template, is it uses, let's go to the object tab here. It uses this setting right here called no input as the release from lock to idle. Now, the problem is, is that if you're running, let's say, and you hold R1, which has no associated input right now, when I let go of walking, you can see that I'm still walking and it's because no input is still not true because I'm technically holding R1. Now, if when I let go of R1, it stops because then no input is true. So let's change this template to what I think a proper basic template should be. And it's fairly simple. We're going to go to what the actual condition are to go from idle to walk. And it's when left is pressed or when right is pressed. And we're actually going to just use those same ones except for, so we're gonna get rid of the no input. We're gonna say when the following input, we're gonna say when left is releasing and releasing means that it's constantly releasing. On release would mean that it was just released. So it would only be registered if it was released in this action, which is not very safe for, for what we wanna do. So we're gonna say is releasing and then we're gonna click another one and say when right is also releasing. And we want this one to be an and because we want left and right not to be pressed to go to idle. To walk, it doesn't matter if left or right is pressed, either one you want to go to walk. All right, so that is the first step in creating a better basic controller. The next one is, is going to be with how jump is handled. So, you usually want a false state because you want when the idle or the walking state walks off a, a ledge, you want it to go into a false state usually. Well, you can't associate with the jump state because the jump state has a jump. So you don't want it to jump when it falls. So you usually need a false state. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to copy the jump state because it has the same animation. We're, we're still gonna play this simple animation but it's just gonna be falling instead. So this will be the fall state. Sometimes you'll see it referenced in the sample projects as the air state when they're in the air. So we'll bring this fall state over here. We'll still have the jump, the, and then the idle will be able to come to jump and the walk will be able to come to jump when A is pressed. But the link to idle is going to change. It's actually going to be moved to the fall state because the link from when you stop falling is going to be this check, which is when you contact tile wall detection, and it's gonna be when the bottom of the wall detection that we did in the animations tab is hitting a tile wall. And we haven't specified a specific tile wall because we left this unchecked. When it's unchecked, it means any tile wall. If we did want a specific one, we would check it, and then we would select from the group of tile that we want. All right, so that is our grounded check per se. So now we can go to the link that will go from jump to fall. We can add a simple link here and there's a condition called jump peak reached. And what this is gonna do is when the player jump, once the player starts to fall again basically, is when it's gonna go to the fall action. That's when this condition will ring true. So if they jump and hit a, a, wall, a ceiling because it's too close, basically they could jump higher than they actually can then it's also going to trigger and jump into the fall. So it's a very nice, basically when the player is falling again, that's when the player will go to the fall state. Now, the one thing is, is since I did copy this one from jump, I need to make sure to uncheck the perform jump. Otherwise, when I fall, I will also jump. So it would be like a double jump, basically. All right, so the last thing to add here is the idle and walk also need to be able to go to a false state. And the reason why is because say we had some ledges in our scene, which I can quickly do here. We can use these ones to make it look a lot better here. So we'll just throw in some of these. 
and then we'll make sure that we go to the tiles we select these give them a top wall detection here so now let's say that this player object was to jump on one of these and then walks off and starts to fall well right now we have no condition saying to do anything in that case so we also want to check if the player is not grounded in the idle and the walk and that's really simple basically we can grab this link that checks if it's grounded and we can copy and paste it the link back to fall and in this case we can just click the opposite value right here and so that would say if this player character's wall detection is not on a tile wall so very easy check there for if the player is not grounded now we also need one for walk because you can be walking off the ledge as well and so now we have a nice proper basic player controller here that we can test out so we'll play test and now we can jump onto the ledges here he's a little fast so we'll, we'll change that and now we can fall and he, you can see that he goes to that jump animation when he falls after walking All right so let's change his movement speed real quick i think a speed of two might fit a little better let's try that one out yeah that feels a little better see how his animation looks with it his animation's a little fast with it and maybe he's a little slow but we'll change that up as it goes but yeah so this is what this video will go over just setting up a more improved basic controller i know that this could be a simple video for someone to just watch as well so it set up some animations set change stuff that we'll do uh, next but this one is just about the improved basic uh, player controller and with that said, we'll see you at the next video.